Welcome to Community Reports on Channel Television. I am your me, Otaibi. The community of people we are bringing to you this week on the program is one that helps in the preservation of events, moments, and everyday living. They are photographers. We'll be looking into how they create durable images, the evolution of analog to digital photography, and the social and cultural importance of photographs. Passing down the history, culture and lifestyle of a people from one generation to another is most of the time done through documentation and preservation of their way of life. In the earlier centuries in Nigeria, Sculptors and bronze casters held sway in the preservation of events and images of personalities. Then between the 17th and 18th centuries, the development of camera obscura happened on the global stage. This later transformed into analog flexible roll film and then digital media which allows images to be stored electronically in a more durable form. In all of this, Nigeria was not left behind. Since the evolution of digital era of photography, the tools and the practitioners in that field have been redefined. The professional photographer is able to use more, um, more complicated um, gadgets. So you're able to control a lot of things manually. That's really what makes you a professional. So it's just beyond um, taking a picture to click. Uh, you are able to control your lights, control your environment, control your subject, you know, to be able to direct the eye of the viewer basically so it's it's more deliberate than accidental for me photography is preservation of life it's the documentation of joy happiness and our everyday living i try and capture emotions in most of my photography or like preserve what i see in today's world because i understand the world is constantly changing um what you see today, you might come back tomorrow and that same thing has gone in its old stage. For me, that's being able to preserve the beauty that I see in my everyday life for the future generation to see is what photography is all about. Redefining photography is not limited to the upgrading of equipment. It also extends to the carving of niches in the profession. We have different um, fields. We have, for example, weddings, we have portraiture, we have um, sports, we have food photography, we have documentary photographers, we have street photographers. So, but for me, I chose wedding because um, I love what happens at weddings. I love the colors, I love the emotions, I love the happiness. I love the storytelling of weddings. That's one thing we need to understand in, 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 in Nigeria. Um, everybody has a gift and everybody's good at what they do. So if you are a food photographer or a product photographer and you stick to that and you do it very well, I'm telling you, you're still going to make so much money. of food, um, architecture, interiors mostly, and products. So for food, it's interesting actually because um, up, not until recently did Nigerians start to appreciate the need to take pictures of food. So for example, a brand wants um, to um, create a recipe book, they want to do like a um, billboard of like a 
particular restaurant or something like that. So those kind of things, they call me, I come in, uh, work with the food stylist, style the food, make it really beautiful and take images for them to use for whatever platform they want to use it for. So that's um, basically how my photography keys into businesses. I had that friction a lot when I started, when clients would say, ah, why am I paying this much for taking pictures of just food? Why can't I just take a camera? And... But it's funny because even photographers, when they get called, to, most of my jobs, I get them referrals from photographers. So a wedding photographer, for example, and somebody calls and says, oh, I need pictures of food taken. If the photographer has tried it before, he will understand the level of detail that goes into it, the complexity. And most times, I get my referrals from photographers that have been commissioned to take pictures of food or products that could not do it. So now they know, like, oh, okay, so that is a photographer that is trained to take pictures. So it goes beyond just taking the camera, setting it up, and just shoot. The lighting, the styling, there are a lot of things that go into it. Product as well. The lighting, the food. So for, for the kind of work I do, lighting is very key. So understanding how to light, where the light has to hit the product is one thing that makes the kind of photography, photography I do very different. Initially when I started off, I tried to focus on everyday life, you know, people engaging in the day-to-day -day activities and how, because Lagos is a big city, it's easy to get lost in it. It's also easy to miss a couple of things. So I was trying to bring to light things people did. So I, I was spending time documenting people that push trucks and different things that were mundane jobs that people do every day and just bringing beauty to it. But as time grew, I became a bit more con socially conscious about what I'd done. So I tried to document stories that I think most people are not really speaking about. One of the most recent of them was I went to Maduguri to look at the aftermath of the Boko Haram insurgency and to see how it, how it has affected people's lives and how people were living their everyday life. But first of all, I saw that Maduguri is a beautiful land. I haven't seen clearer skies in the whole of Nigeria. As, um, as much as I saw in Maduguri. It was quite interesting for me to see an elephant in Maduguri, Borno State, where when people think about that state, they don't think tourism, they don't think wildlife, they only think violence and insurgency and poverty. So for me, that picture, the blue sky, the vibrancy, and just the very fact of seeing an elephant just gave me so much life. It gave me so much hope. Also, the level of security and like insecurity that people project to you or the media makes it seem, I didn't see that present in the everyday life of the... Regardless of how I felt, I was there to document how people that live there felt, and they didn't feel as insecure as the media made it seem. So I saw a lot of hope, I saw joy. I also saw an educational gap for the younger generation, you know, and that's one of the areas that I'm currently thinking about and how I can shed a bit more light on that as well.